All right, guys, I'm back with another video. So I want to cover spring secondary motion. Now you can go to the documentation and they have a breakdown on that, but to help people understand a little bit better and for those who don't like reading, <laughs> uh, here's the video. So let's get started. First off, uh, if you want to recreate this, I'll go ahead and walk you through the steps and then I will tell you what all this stuff means. So down in the dis uh, I will put bookmarks on the video so that you can skip this part if you want. So we're going to press the home button or if you don't have the screen already press the home button. If you do just open up the UE4 mannequin. What we're going to do is we're going to press this button right here to go into point controller mode or push the arrow and then select point controller mode. Afterwards double click the arm. We're going to go into the X or side view and then we're going to press the square to go into orthographic press E for rotate and we're going to rotate this up you can rotate it up however far you want afterwards we're going to go to frame 100 select frame 100 and then press F to set a keyframe or you can press this button here to set the keyframe afterwards you can press Alt B to set the interpolation between the frames is Bezier where you can pr press this button and select Bezier with one of these in between keys uh, or frames uh, selected. That'll uh, set the Bezier curve. Afterwards, you can press Auto Physics and it'll uh, pull up this mannequin right here. I'm pressing Alt and Middle Mouse button to pan. You can turn Physics Corrector off. You don't have to. Uh, uh, simulate physics with this in order to get it to work properly. It will work properly without uh, the physics because in some cases you may not want the effects that the physics has. So in that case you can actually turn it off. Now you can turn uh, spring secondary motion on and with these all these selected you can double click it again on the shoulder point controller if you need. And then we're going to select everything on the timeline. And then we're going to go to object properties. So in object properties, we can select apply on selected interval. It'll turn red when you're on apply on selected interval. Up here in the physics settings under spring secondary motion, you have your enter frame count, which controls the stability. If your computer is lagging, uh, then you can turn this down to make it more performance friendly but that may also make the uh, simulation less stable. If it doesn't seem stable enough to you you can increase it but 100 is a good value. Kinematic stiffness and dampening uh, and translation air dampening and rotation air dampening I do believe well, I do believe that at least the kinematic ones are affecting the kinematic mode. By default, all these point controllers are in kinematic mode. That means it follows the pose that has been keyed on that frame. So if you want to have it simulate a sec spring secondary motion on those point controllers, you have to select all those point controllers. In this case, we've selected the entire arm, and we're going to select dynamic to switch to dynamic mode. Now we can start in the settings. So we're going to go ahead and set all this to zero uh, so that it's more obvious what's happening. And right now it looks like uh, the hand is just going nuts, which it is. So, but we're going to go through these settings one by one and so that you'll understand how you can have full control over this. Uh, so first off, we'll go ahead and set this to 50 on rotation stiffness and you'll see that rather than going all the way back it's now it now seems to be constrained like it's on a wire uh, that's preventing it from rotating too far and that's basically kind of what's happening here is we're basically preventing it from rotating too far away from the pose that it's meant to be in uh, so that's the reason why 
it's not going very far. So the higher you turn this up, the more closely it'll match the pose. And, and so you'll see. If we turn, if we just keep turning this up, it'll get closer and closer to the actual pose. So now this this brings us to our next one, rotation damping. So that crazy stuff that you see right there, that's what rotation damping is for. Basically. Uh, if you don't have any rotational damping, then it'll just keep spinning. The more damping you add to it, the faster it'll stop spinning. And so if we set this value to something like 5, you'll see already that the rotation has slowed down quite a bit. We turn it to 15 you'll see it has became very stable and now it's just swinging back and forth and we can keep going with this to make it even more stable okay so translational stiffness same thing as rotational stiffness except it's it's uh, Location, not rotation. So if we set this to something like 50, you'll see that it doesn't move very far. If we, if we set this to 25, you'll see it starts to move a little bit further away. But this is actually the actual location. So if we just do something like 5, it's allowed to rotate and do whatever as long as it doesn't get go or stray too far away from the pose's uh, location for that joint. So if we set this to 80, it basically won't move. The default value for this is 5. And that's what you're seeing here. Alright, so the translational dampening, same thing, uh, except this one will be quite a bit more noticeable. So if we set it to something like 50, it basically falls on slow motion. So if you need to slow it down, uh, you can add more translational damping. So what we'll do is we'll just set this to, to 5. We'll set this to 15. Also something else too is the stiffness versus the damping for the translation or for the rotation. Uh, the value of these in relation to each other actually uh, matters. So the documentation says that if the damping is slower is lower than the stiffness then it'll oscillate faster and if uh, if the damping is higher than the stiffness then it'll uh, it'll stop faster. But if the damping and the stiffness have the same value then it'll oscillate evenly. The oscillations will be evenly distributed. So keep that in mind. You can experiment with that yourself uh, but I'll just kind of give you an idea. There you go. Um, as far as clipping into the body, I don't know what to tell you about that. <laughs> so, the global rotation uh, matching 
and the global translation matching it's just what it sounds like uh, if you if you enable that it's going to be in global space rather than uh, the rotation will be relative to its global positioning rather than its local positioning by default it's local which is probably more appropriate for most situations but I'll go ahead and en enable it so you can see uh, the difference it looks a, it looks a bit differently and that's the reason or well, the reason why is because it's uh, being calculated based off of uh, global space not local so it'll look more net the rotation will look more natural if it's in local but in some cases you may need global uh, so that's why they have that here you probably won't see much of a difference if you switch global translation to local um, I'm not sure what the difference is to be honest but I'm sure there's a there's some use case for it uh, same thing with the translation translation air damping uh, so uh, that's supposed to be kind of like it's supposed to I guess simulate wind resistance so anyway that's the first video for this and I will see you in the next one uh, if you found this helpful make sure to like down below and consider subscribing we have a discord and uh, I've created a new channel just for Cascader in there so uh, let me know also if you're interested in the premium uh, features such as uh, the mocap uh, from image or from video and the hand mocap or the hand auto posing finger auto posing I should say then uh, I will have a, uh, a discount code a promo code down in the description as well all right we'll see you in the next video